Hi, welcome to Data Engineering and today we are going to discuss about the important 10 points that we need to explain before and after explaining our big data project. So in this video, I am not going to explain you a big data project with an architecture and so on so on so stuff. Okay, that is not the agenda of the video. So whenever you go for an interview, when we start explaining our project, there is some important things that we have to explain before and after explaining the actual project and that is the so that is the important thing which is required for the interview and we will impress a lot uh, like interviewer will be get more impressed when we explain that and they will they will believe us in with that we are, have a real time experience for sure and sometimes even people do have the real time experience but they fail in the interview the reason is even though they explain the project and the architecture internals and everything but still there should be some kind of an interesting facts that you have to explain and that is what I'm going to give you today okay so please do watch this video till then so that this will be very useful for you okay so now you have a big data project so as I told you I'm not going to explain but there is an upcoming series coming where I will explain different big data projects with the architectures okay so you can get all the videos link from the description box of this video fine so now the 10 important points point number one okay so what is your LOB L O B full form line of business that's very important so you work for so, uh, the IT company uh, which they do a business of Parma or banking or finance or fintech so what a retail what uh, line of business your company is doing that's very important so because some companies are very familiar for you but your company is very familiar for you right but if you go for some other uh, company for an interview when you just say the company name they they don't even know what is that company is for okay so if you say some very famous company then they, okay, they will come to know okay this is banking this is pharma but when you sell some some small company you worked in a small startup or a small product based company so people will not uh, come to know what is the line of business so it's very important to explain your line of business okay that is the first thing and second question what is your upstream technology or the upstream team the upstream is all about the source team from which you will get the data so what is your upstream the upstream is again a team it's uh, okay let me name it as a and our big data project team let me name it as b so who is your source team and the team which gives you the data and you do some process in your big data right so so what is the upstream the upstream is a team and that could be again a technology it's it, it could be some uh, technology that particular a team is using that technology is your upstream so it could be a mainframe or it could be a database or it could be some etl technology like informatica or abinetio or database means it could be an oracle or teradata so or it could be even a flat files uh, just a flat file if some files will come to some some common path and from there you will read a file and you do all the process in big data so you can say it's a flat file also but you have to define what is your upstream and which technology it is that's it it's, it's a simpler one-liner explanation is enough and you don't want to explain what your upstream is all about what they are doing and all it's not at all required and who is upstream for your upstream so that is not required so just one liner what is your upstream that's it and, and what what technology it is so from which you get the data right so same question who is your downstream so you get the data from the A team, which is your source team, and you do a lot of processing in big data. You do with Hive, Spark, and so so uh, blah blah stuff. You do you do some process, and to whom you are going to give the data? Someone, right? Some team is there for that. For them only you are working, right? So who is your downstream? To which I will give my processed data. So you are downstream. Okay. So third question. So so far we have seen uh, two questions like. Uh, what, what is your upstream and then like uh, what is your line of business and the third question is your downstream again your downstream could be some team which okay let let me name it as C and some technology they might have used it right so again you are sending it as a file or you are loading it in a DB or the, the extracted file the processed file or you are you are giving to some visualization team okay some visualization team like uh, a tableau or micro strategy you are giving to a uh, some visualization team from which they will prepare some charts and they will give it to the client okay so again one liner explanation of what is your downstream and what they are going to do with your data so again one liner it's 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 pretty much enough and then fourth question type of your data 
that's again important so you get some uh, data uh, as a db or from etl tool or from mainframe it's simple it's it's completely fine it's completely fine so it's it's going to be a structured data or you have to say i'm getting some semi structured data or unstructured data and again even it is a structured data and you are getting it as a file and what is your file format is important whether it is txt or csv or some format some other format of files that you are getting so defining your file format is important same question fifth question so in which format that you give data to downstream that's again a question again you you if you load it to a database then fine but if you are giving it as a, uh, a structured file then again you have to say whether you are giving it as a txt file or csv something so you have to define your upstream file format and your downstream file format sixth question frequency of data that you get from upstream okay so that means like uh, imagine like uh, we have some uh, data that that will not come always or like it, it won't come just once in a year or once in a month it, it, it may or may not right so you have to define it the you have to define the frequency so imagine for example i will tell you one one of the frequency which i worked in one of my project like uh, i will get the data two times in a week wednesday and saturday and then i will process so or you you are getting daily basis like five hours once or you get one hour once for every one hour once you will get a data so you have to tell the frequency from upstream in what frequency you will get the data they it's all scheduled automated okay you will get the data uh, uh, whatever the frequency that you have defined between you and uh, your upstream team you have to explain and seventh question it's again the same with your downstream in what frequency that you are giving the processed data to your downstream that's again an important question so one important point here you have to note down is it's it, it 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 is not mandatory that your upstream frequency and downstream frequency should be like equal it's not like that may or may not again so you get data for from the upstream one hour once but your downstream required the processed data only by five hour once it it may or may not the frequency changes it depends on your upstream and downstream agreement what you had with your downstream team and what the agreement you had with the upstream team now imagine every one hour once i get the data from upstream and then i will process the data and i will be uh, giving this data to my downstream by end of day okay this is one use case so define your frequency from uh, frequency from upstream to your team and again from your team to your downstream that's the thing fine so uh, the next question size of your data okay so you have to say some rough average size of your data so what is the volume of the data that you get from your upstream okay so let me give you an scenario explain uh, an example so i work for a banking company imagine and we have like uh, uh, we do have some uh, we we do we handle data of from 15 countries imagine in that way so all these 15 countries data as a file it will be get generated and every one hour once i will get it and that means from the source team you will get 15 files for every one hour now you try to get the average size of these 15 files of every one hour okay or you can even um, uh, consider uh, based on you can custom uh, you can manually uh, uh, change the size it depends on the volume that you get from different countries but what i'm telling you is an average size or even you tell the row count is also fine you get 1 million uh, records uh, from 15 files or you can say like 1 million records from each uh, file or 3 million or even 100 records that is fine but an average size will be uh, kind of an uh, adding an extra spices to the uh, food so it will be in that way so uh, you can even say 25 gb roughly or 100 mb 100 gb it's also fine because i i've told you in a different videos that volume doesn't matter it's all about how you have handled the data in the project for what problem that is important so don't worry about telling the volume okay i have to tell 100 gb only i have to tell 20 gb only it's not that way and if you already uh, working with some data projects like data warehouse or existing uh, like uh, other than big data you are in already in a data related projects then you can use your volume of data what you are currently handling or if you are new to big data or new to the data world itself then you can check with your friends or colleagues who work in some data related projects and just ask them what will be the average size of data that we will get so that is for your uh, uh, self thing i am saying but uh, uh, actually what i suggest you to say even you say 25 gb per hour for this 15 file is still fine it's still okay it's not about you have to say 100 gb 200 gb doesn't matter okay now the next uh, question is all about okay so um, again uh, like 
are you using any compression format uh, oh, so when you receive the data right so you are getting the data from upstream you use any if, if it if it comes as a file then are you doing any compression like you are using zip format or tar file something like that so you are compressing it if we are just loading we are getting it from the table then it's fine but if you are getting it as a file then whether it's compressed or not mostly the when you are getting as a file it will be compressed and again the same question like how you will give the data to your downstream if it is a database then fine for example you receive a file from your source team and in your uh, big data you you are processing with hive and spark you are doing some magic on on top of it and then you are loading the processed data of from the spark and hive again a table in hive so the processed output you are again storing it as a table in hive or some other rdbms and from which your downstream will read it so again what way like you are uh, giving the data it's a db means fine if it if, if it is again a file you are processed data is going as a file and again you have to say like whether you are compressing it before handing it over to your downstream okay and the last question is all about what is your data is about that's important the 10th question is much very important see i'm telling that i'm coming uh, i'm working for a banking domain okay it's completely fine you're working for a banking domain but in in banking itself we have a lot of data right so you have transactions you have payments data you have fraud information risk management data employees information and then offers so you you have so many data right so in which particular domain of data that you are working so if you take banking i have these many branches so you say like i work for payments i work for risk i work for uh, employees data what type of data that you handle so that's again a one liner or two liner is, is fine you don't want to explain the complete stuff for example i work for uh, a, a particular uh, uh, pharma company and i work for uh, the data related to uh, medicines okay or the sales but if you take uh, again in the sales i will be having 200 300 plus tables i don't want to explain each of the table right so just tell them that you are working for sales related information and, and then you explain what you are actually doing and what 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 is the need for the data that for for what purpose you are giving for your downstream okay so these 10 points is really important like uh, before and after explaining your big data project it, it gives the better articulation of providing the explanation uh, presentation will be really good and uh, like even though people have good experience but still they used to say i'm really working in big data i have a lot of experience like five years i worked but still i'm failing in the interview because i was not able to present the project properly it's because like you have to add these points so these points will come as a question also that's very important if you miss explain miss to explain these 10 points then this will come as a questions for you okay so before they ask you this if you tell everything then it will be uh, good in the interview and as i already told you i am going to upload more video series of big data projects only i will going to like explaining the architecture in and out of what we do exactly within big data but for all the upcoming videos explaining about big data projects this video will be common for all those uh, videos what i'm going to upload hereafter so thanks for watching my video and please do subscribe channel and uh, if you really like this video please do share this in your linkedin with your friends and colleagues and thanks for watching and for more videos you can get the links of my big data videos and playlist stuff in the description box of this video and i have shared my instagram and linkedin url in the description box thanks for watching